I need to talk to you for a minute. Why don't you have a seat right there, please? So this turned out to be quite a shock. Apparently a skill that just flat out prevents you from doing your standard Dark Magician combo of Circle, Navigation, plus a Dark Magician to banish one of your opponent's monsters. Apparently a skill that prevents that trifecta actually doesn't suck. So before the new skill came out, I was absolutely dreading making this video. As essentially I just thought, this skill was so goddamn bad, I'd just have to upload a standard Dark Magician video and just play the new Fusion stuff and call it a day, which would be so boring as I really wanted to try out this skill. Well it turns out, I'm just a complete and utter dummy. This skill, if you compare it to the standard Dark Magician combo, it's basically an equivalent exchange. Your standard Dark Magician combo is essentially just a remove one. Your brand new skill is, well, a remove one. So you're basically getting the exact same thing, you're just training one source of removal for another source of removal, and then the playstyle of the deck just completely changes. It's kind of hard for me to explain how this deck list functions without just showing it to you, so without further ado, let's just get into the video. So here's today's deck list. Now just a reminder before I get into the deck list, if you're enjoying today's video and want to see more content just like this in the future, especially if you're a returning viewer, it's apparently about 50% of the people watching this or even subscribed to the channel, nearly all of you are returning viewers who have seen my content before. So if you find yourself, keep coming back to the channel and see more content just like this in the future, remember to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel down below. Alright, let's get into the deck list. So what is new in Dark Magician? Well, most of you guys are probably staring at this deck list and thinking, what the hell are you doing, where is your navigation, or where is your eternal soul? Because obviously, they're generally staples in this deck list and required to get your standard Dark Magician Circle pop during your opponent's turn. Well, you see, your skill, your brand new skill, has a limitation on it that basically prevents that. Essentially, this skill has a limitation. During your opponent's turn, you cannot special summon monsters from your hand or graveyard except level 6 monsters, making your trap cards essentially just completely dead and do absolutely nothing. Obviously your eternal soul can still be kind of useful as you can sort of bring dark magicians back or special summon them during your turn, but in general it just becomes a really dead card. So if you want to play this skill, you have to just change up your playstyle for dark magician entirely, and let me show you how. So this skill has three effects. The first one is essentially you can now normal summon Dark Magician monsters, but without tributing them, which is pretty important because obviously if you have Circle on the field, that's just a free banish. So even without the trap cards, you can still summon Dark Magicians, you're just gonna have to do it during your own turn. Then we have the two effects of the skill. The first one is you can return one Dark Magician girl, Magical Dimension, or, this is a mistranslation, mistranslation Magical Cylinder to your deck from your hand, add one Dimension Conjurer from outside your deck to your hand, and then add one Dark Magician Girl to your hand. So essentially this skill allows you to take either a copy of Dark Magician Girl, Magical Dimension, or a card we are definitely not going to be playing, and shuffle it back into the deck to then add a copy of this card to your hand, and a copy of Dimensional Conjurer, which is a really powerful card. Because essentially, if this card is normal special summoned, you can add one Magical Dimension from your deck or graveyard to your hand. If this card is sent from the monster zone to the graveyard, you can draw cards equal to the number of spell cards the monsters you control, then place cards from your hand on top of the deck in any order equal to the number of cards you just drew. So what this deck is going to end up doing is you're going to be activating your skill, swapping this card into your deck, adding this card back to your hand in combination with this card. Normal summon it, search for a copy of Magical Dimension. This card, if you control a spellcaster type monster, can target one monster you control, tribute that target, then special summon one spellcaster type monster from your hand to destroy one monster on the field. So you're going to be adding this card to your hand, normal summoning it, searching for this, and because you also just searched for a Dark Magician Girl, you can pop this monster, pop one of your opponent's cards, and summon a Dark Magician Girl from your hand. If all that sounded confusing, don't worry, when you see it during the combo portion of the video, or during the replay portion, it will make a ton of sense. It's a fairly simple combo that also nets you a nice little draw as well, and if you have multiple Dark Magicians on the field, you're going to get multiple draws off of this card. 
The final effect of this skill is if you control a Dark Magician, you can add a copy of your Secrets of Dark Magic from your deck to your hand, or from the graveyard to your hand, which is of course the brand new Dark Magician Fusion spell. And the most important part about this card is that it's a quick play. So if your opponent ever tries to activate back row in response to a Dark Magician, you can just activate this card, swap out your Dark Magician, summon out a gigantic fusion monster in its place. Or during the battle phase, you can swing in with a Dark Magician, then activate this card, swap out that Dark Magician, here's a giant fusion monster, and you just have lethal damage on the field. The actual effect of this card is extremely simple, the second part of it is about ritual summoning so you can just ignore it, but the first effect is just, it's just a polymerization just for Dark Magician or Dark Magician girl materials. And the card you're going to be summoning with this fusion spell is going to be the Dark Magicians. This card takes one Dark Magician or Dark Magician girl plus one spell cast a time monster, so obviously a very easy requirement in a deck list that can search for Dark Magician girl. Alright. Once per turn of a Spell or Trap card or effect is activated, except during the damage step, you can draw one card. Then if it was a Spell or Trap card, you can set it. And if it was a Trap card or Quick Play spell, you can activate it this turn. So obviously, a fantastic card just generating advantage during your turn, and during your opponent's turn, if they ever activate any kind of Spell card or Trap card, or you activate a Book of Moon or something, you get to draw one card. If you then draw into a copy of something like Dimension, or a copy of Ring of Destruction, or another Book of Moon, all of a sudden, you just have another source of removal to remove one of your opponent's cards, because it can be used instantly during your opponent's turn. This card also has a nice little bonus effect, where if this card is destroyed, you can spell on both one Dark Magician and one Dark Magician from your hand, deck, and or graveyard. But do keep in mind, this card still does come under the restrictions of your skill, so you're not going to be summoning a Dark Magician specifically from your hand or your graveyard, but you can summon one from your deck if you still have one. So keep that in mind, it's going to come up very very rarely, but if it does come up, you'll understand why. The skill does actually stop you summoning from hand or graveyard, Dark Magician, but it can summon it still from deck, so you're probably still going to be fine. Final thing I want to talk about with this deck list is why the hell am I running specifically Ring of Destruction? Well, unfortunately, I don't own Compulse, and Compulse is by far the best card to run in its place. You should 100% play Compulse in this deck list, especially considering you can't play Ice Dragon's Prison, because this card requires a special summon, and your skill prevents special summoning. I learned this the hard way. So essentially you can't play this card, you're going to have to play Compulse instead, or if you don't own Compulse, play some other kind of back row. I'm playing Ring of Destruction purely because I feel like having something like Bottomless doesn't feel very good in a deck list where I'm drawing cards to then potentially use instantly to remove stuff. For example, my opponent summons a monster, it searches a spell card, or they activate a fusion spell, summon out a big boss monster. Being able to draw into a bottomless then feels really awful because my opponent has already summoned their monster to the field and I can't use this card to remove it. So I like having something that's instantly usable, instantly target, instantly remove, which is why I'm playing my Ring of Destruction. But like I said, this, this should 100% be a Compulse, especially considering this card can't be used during my turn, whereas this card can still draw into things to use during my turn, which would then be, you know, not doesn't feel very good. So if you have Compulse, 100% play it. Alright guys, that's all for this decklist portion of the video. The rest of the video will be gameplay showcasing the decklist in action, and let's just jump into it. Alright, so if you're wondering about win rates and stuff with this decklist, I actually had a really insane run with it. I think I went 9 wins and 3 losses, which is pretty damn insane for a decklist I only just started playing, especially considering two of those matches that I lost were against other Dark Magician decks, so I literally lost mirror matches, and the final one I lost would have been a win, if I wasn't playing the wrong trap card that I didn't know I couldn't use at the time, considering I was playing the trap card that requires a special summon. So any other trap card would have won me the game instantly, I just need to prevent him from summoning out his big Link 3, or removing his Link 3 in this Gohi deck list. I 100% would have won this game, but I just, yeah, I was running the wrong trap card. So I think that's a pretty decent run for this deck list, especially considering, like, I thought when this skill came out, this deck would be completely dead in the water, but it's actually a really decent deck list. As you'll see from the replays, it wasn't like I was playing against off-meta stuff too. I was playing against Mech Knight, I played against, like I said, Goki, I played against a copy of uh, Infernoid, all this stuff that's actually top tier meta relevant. Unfortunately, I had no Phantom Light matchup, so I can't tell you how bad that one is, but yeah, it's honestly not a bad deck. Alright. I even got a rank up, so 100% you can get cog with this deck. Alright, activate my skill, swap out my dude, add a copy of my Dimension Conjurer to hand, and add a copy of Dark Magician Girl back to hand as well. Searching for my Magical Dimension, setting my two cards and passing the turn. So essentially it's fairly similar to how your standard Dark Magician setup was, where you're just going to have one pop you search for during 
to use during your opponent's turn. Alright, summoning a dude to the field. I'm not going to worry about this too much. But I am going to worry about this other card. Because that other card would have summoned Slink from hand. Alright, sorry. I'm probably distracting from this fantastic animation. Oh, God. Alright, popping that. Alright. Unfortunately, he was able to bring it back again, but I still had one lot of back throws, so I'm still completely fine. Still Link summons, summons a Code Talker, but unfortunately that's it of his turn, no more extenders, so... I can just normal summon Dark Magician without a care. Search my, um, secrets, swing in, swing in again, even if he somehow survived, showing you that I can mass change. Summon now Dark Magicians, and I would have had another swing in as well. Alright, on to replay number two. So I think this was the Mech Knight dude, I, I think. To be fair, I don't think he was playing a very, uh, top tier variant of the Mech Knight deck list. He was playing some sort of interesting stuff, but it was still Mech Knight all the same. We take those. Alright. So opponent summons a copy of this, which thankfully wasn't the thing that's going to stop me being able to uh, summon cards. Summons out a copy of Morning Star. Surges his annoying skill drain. And passes back to me. Now I misplay a little bit here because I think I activate my circle. And Dark Magician. I normal summon Dark Magician. And I place it in the wrong zone. I should have placed it in front of this one since this thing stops you being able to destroy things. Or you can't destroy things by battle unless it's in the same column. So a little bit of misplay. Meant to play it over here. Just kind of forgot for a second. But thankfully I have godlike RNG and I win the 50-50 hitting his secret. Which means no Mech Knight for him. Alright, shuffle grabbing my Conjurer. And passing back. He beats over my monster. Thankfully can't really do a whole lot with this card. So Dark Magician Circle, banishing his card. Add to my thing, searching for my uh, new spell card. Feed over his thing, fusion summon out. Dark Magicians. And unfortunately not quite enough for lethal. There might have been a way to play this turn actually where I could have gotten lethal, but... Eh, whatever, we won. <laughs> it doesn't matter, we got the win. Alright. And this must be the Infernoid player. Yeah, so hopefully you can see just sort of from this gameplay already, just this deck list really just, it's quite good. It's basically the same as the previous variant, except you've now got this sort of mass change fusion interaction. It might be better than the previous variant. I think the only thing that I've sort of encountered that felt kind of bad with this deck is the fact you have to play so many copies of Dark Magician Girl just so you can get your skill procced on turn one, just the most consistent amount of time. So it feels like multiple copies of this feels really bad, especially after you've used the initial skill proc. Then whenever you draw it, it just feels like it's literally just fusion material there after that point, so it feels kind of bad. But that's like the only real downside I've seen from the skill so far. The rest feels kind of okay. Even running multiple copies of this feels fine. Alright. Swapping it out, and a copy of my Dimension Conjurer. Not going to use it though, because I already have a pop anyway. Which I am going to use it, I lied. Alright. He's going he's gonna to negate this so I don't get my search, but that's fine because I'm using my dimension to um, summon out a Dark Magician from hand. So I get my pop on the field. Conjurer also gets a draw. This time a bunch of dudes. Keep in mind, by the way, as I don't know if I mentioned this during the game, uh, deckless portion, it's not actually a draw, it's a draw then shuffle back in, so it's more of a hand fixing sort of draw. Alright. Going to battle face, swing it in. Swapping out. Summon out Dark Magicians, which they don't have an animation for for some reason. They really should have added one. He's now going to summon out his dude, pop my back row. That's fine, I'm just going to summon out a couple of dudes if he doesn't negate it, but he does. Alright. Add to my circle. Grab me a copy of Dark Magician, fantastic, because now I can just use my skill, add my fusion spell back to hand, and there's lethal on field. Tack in, activate this, swap it over, and Mr. Dude over here is now gone. 
So I think that's actually a really good example of this deck list in action. It was really good. I don't think this deck will do too well in tournament setting play. I think it will do okay, but I don't think it's going to be like your next top tier deck list or anything. If anything, I think it's going to sort of have the same sort of uh, power level that standard dungeon has. Nothing's too different about it. If anything, like I said, it might be slightly better than Standard Dark Magician, but it's not its not like so much better that I think it would be top tier or anything. But it could be, who knows. We'll see how the um, deck develops or how people, um, what kind of combos people find for it. As my, my ratios might be a bit weird too. I think maybe 3 Dark Magician Girl might be a bit too much, I'm not sure. It is max consistency for your skill proc, but at the same time, if you just have one trap card, maybe just use that as your one back crew removal instead, just in case, you know? Because at the end of the day, you're only searching for one lot of removal, so if you just have one trap card in place of that Dark Magician Girl, maybe that'll just be the same thing, I don't know. Either way, activating Book of Moon, targeting his cavalry to make sure he discards from hand. Now I can use Circle to remove it. Hopefully no MST. Banish his card. Searching for my fusion spell. Fusioning from hand. Oh, I was discarding from hand to search for a Dark Magician, so I have an attack on field. So now I can activate my secrets, summon out my Dark Magician, making sure to keep this in hand in case he does have removal, which he has a compulse. Lucky bastard. <laughs> and there's my Dark Magician for lethal. Alright. On to the final replay, which is against Rose Dragon, I think. All right. So this guy was a bit of a dum dum, but it also shows off another cool thing about the spell card, which I probably haven't mentioned yet. So we're going second in this case, activates his Spell of Roses, does his typical Rose Dragon-y stuff, basically ends on the standard end field of just that one Synchro monster that's untargetable, which doesn't matter to this deck list because this card isn't actually a target removal source. So although you lose out on the potential back removal from Circle's removal in standard Dark Magician, you trade off the targeting effect for a non-targeting effect, so it's a little bit of a good trade off. Alright, searching for a Dark Magician. Normal summoning it, banishing the middle card, it's a warning point. I'm now going to use my um, Dispersion to swap it out. For some reason he thinks Book of Moon is going to prevent this. No. <laughs> swap it out. Summon another Dark Magician from hand, banishing his card, or destroying his card. Searching for my Fusion Spell, so now I can swing in, activate Fusion Spell. And he can seize before the big boss monster even comes out, because that would be lethal. Alright guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you didn't leave a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, hope to see you guys in the next one. Laters. Hey big brother, can I watch SpongeBob? Shut up, Mokuba. I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.